You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey there, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the No Labels, No Limits podcast, a podcast all about shedding our limiting labels and beliefs. This week, we're joined by Carla Ann Caroy. I'm going to give you a bunch of information about Carla because it all pertains to what we're going to talk about today. Carla Ann is a mom and grandma who has basically done it all from piano teaching to car sales to executive business coaching. Additionally, she's an author, speaker, coach, and full-time caregiver to adults with disabilities. Her joy, though, is being with family, and the beach is her happy place. Um, I'll ask her where she lives, and I want to know how she satisfies her happy place from her current location. Um, On a personal note, she is an Enneagram 8 with a seven wing, and her personality means that she is a force to be reckoned with. But here's the beauty of knowing her. Her heart is what draws people to her and to love her. Carla Ann loves to see her clients succeed and achieve, and she has experienced her own success in the personal health and wellness realm and other areas, but she lost nearly 200 pounds. And today she helps others on their journey to health in mindset, emotion, faith, and business. And Carla Ann credits her faith in God as a driving force behind serving others and living to leave a legacy. So that's that's where she's heading. She's living to leave a legacy. So on today's episode, I'm going to explore with Carla more about health and how using the Enneagram to get healthy and lose weight Um, helped her on her journey, and also how that test is different from other personality tests and how we can use our number of our numbers and how linked to our stress stress and our growth path um, really can help us proceed and make gains because those are some keys to unlock. And I don't think everybody necessarily understands how to benefit from that information. And Carla Ann certainly does. So with that, let's welcome our guest, Carla Ann Caroy. Hi, Carla Ann. Hi, it's so good to be here. It's so fun to meet you. Um, I do want to know how you satisfy your beach desires when you live in middle of Canada, which to my memory, you're not living on the lakefront, are you? No, I'm not living on a lakefront. And I, and most of the year, the lake is frozen. So honestly, my beach is like June to September. That's when I get to go to the, go to the beach, usually not in the water till July, but you know, if we have an early spring, it might be May, but no. <laughs> so yeah, that my happy place is concentrated in three months. Yeah. Well, at least you know not to squander those three months, right? No, nope, no, do not. Focus. Yeah. Um, I do like to ask all of our guests the same question, Carla Ann, and that is, is there something that you do every day that keeps you living true to your own purpose and calling? Yes. I... Like years ago, there, well, I'll, I'll talk about two things. I'll talk about two things. Um, years ago, I realized I'd been a Christian all my life, pretty much from a child, but I realized that when I spend time in the word and I am deliberate with Thanksgiving, um, journaling Thanksgiving, being very deliberate about what am I thankful for, but I'm very deliberate, not just about the good things. I'm also very deliberate about being thankful for the hard things Um, that changes my perspective. And when my perspective changes as an Enneagram 8, I find that I realize I'm not in control and God is in control and he's actually very good. So that thankfulness practice has been huge for me. And um, the second practice that I have for that for me, which I didn't learn the reason why until recently, uh, why it's so important is I made a decision years ago that I would always live today as if it's my last day. 
I want to make sure that I am um, living out today the kind of funeral and obituary that I want to have when I die. I want my children and my grandchildren to speak about my life and to have a, a, a model to follow. So every single day, I live based on if I die today, will so and so, will these people that I've encountered know that I love them, know that I've lived with honesty and integrity and spoken the truth in love that I need to speak. And um, I learned uh, not so long ago, about a year ago, that uh, apes have a future stance. And I'm like, oh, this makes so much sense. So yeah, I, I always have that in my mind. If you talk to my kids, they will, they will laugh. They will tell you that my love language is death. It's not. <laughs> They're like, there's five love languages. No, there's six love languages. And mom has the sixth one, the love language of death. But that's because I'm constantly saying, if I died, do you know? And in case I die, or my, my mindset from the time they were little has been, I want to live so that my death serves a purpose. And so they know that. They know where to find things on my computer that are labeled in the event of my death. And uh, and I do this on purpose because I feel like I'm placed here for a purpose and I wanna make sure I achieve that. Um, not because my salvation is hinged on it, but because I know there are crowns and rewards in heaven and I'm an eight, I'm competitive, I want some. That cracks me up, um, partly because now I do have a different question for you. How many kids do you have and what do you know what their numbers are? Oh, gracious. That's a very big question you just asked me. I gave birth to four children. Three of them are married and um, I have assimilated other children, other adult children into my life that are part of our family and uh, two adults. Actually, one of them is married. And between those six, I have uh, seven grandchildren. And do I know their Enneagram types? I know most of their Enneagram types. There are probably two that I'm unsure of, and they are not necessarily excited to find out their own Enneagram types. <laughs> so why I asked that, and you mentioned this, like you're forward facing, right? And I had a similar conversation. My husband goes, oh, I want you to understand how to do everything with the RV and the car and hook it up and stuff. Well, as a five, I want to know how to do that just from a competency standpoint, right. right? Of course, I want to know how to do that. But I haven't put much effort into it, even though he's shown me before, because I don't have to yet. Right. So he brings it up. I, so then I, I said, that sounds great, babe. As soon as we, you know, dewinterize it, I'm there for you. And then about 20 minutes later, he says, that's kind of unsettling. What brought that up in the moment? <laughs> right. And I'm thinking, on, because I'm not thinking future, I'm right here right now, right? That doesn't need to be thought of right now. So that's why I asked about your kids, like how many of them, like when you're doing that and they're going future focus, they're going, hold the brakes, mom. Yeah. Yeah. There are some that are like, mom, do we have to talk about this? Do we have to talk about <laughs> death all the time? And I don't feel like I'm talking about death all the time. I'm talking about leaving a legacy. Yeah. But that means something different to every personality type. So I have some strong aids. I have so I have a four, I have a five, I have at least one six, and I have a strong nine, a really strong nine. What an interesting family mix you have. With that in mind, and you know, you mentioned the stances and all of that. We're not actually going into too much detail on that right now, but I do think it's important to recognize that even though we may have numbers, we are not just our number. Right. So I do want to ask you, um, what was or is your health and weight loss journey like for you? I mean, to everybody's estimation, that is a huge change in body weight, body image, your health impacts. Can you share a little bit about what that, that journey has been like, Carly Ann? It started, I, I was overweight and unhealthy. I'd seen naturopaths, I'd seen nutritionists, I'd seen dietitians. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars in, in um, supplements and dietary plans and uh, vitamins and shakes and stuff. And I just got sicker and sicker. I tried literally every diet under the sun. And I had, I finally just was eating pretty much chicken and salad. That was pretty much my life. 
and um, but not getting any better. And I ended up with an infection. I got a horse fly bite because I was at the beach. I got a horse fly bite and that horse fly bite nearly killed me. Um, it began to, uh, it got infected and my body had no resources to fight. So that was the first thing and it came twice and I ended up having to have a pick line inserted. I was at the emergency or at the hospital an hour and a half in the morning, hour and a half at night for strong antibiotic treatments. And at one point I did flatline and I was, you know, my daughter was there, they had called her and my kids finally came to me and said, mom, we, we need to do something. You, we need you. Uh, I'm a single mom. And they're like, we need a, we need a mom and you need to get healthy. So my son, who is a type five, uh, did a lot of research and said, mom, could you, could you check out what this doctor says? And honestly, I was sick. I was tired. I had tried everything and I was not particularly interested in it. So, um, I went to prayer and I felt like God was saying to me, just try one more time, respect him, try one more time. So I said, okay, I will try this. And it was very radical. It was very different from anything else I'd ever learned. And the process meant eliminating pretty much all the food from my diet and then testing it one by one. And first of all, what I found out is I can't handle chicken. My body does not handle chicken. Here I was eating all this chicken and salad. So I was eating chicken and salad and realizing no wonder I'm getting sick and I'm not healing. So the weight started coming off. Um, yeah, so I've, I've lost this weight, but the, what I learned in losing weight is that there was way more baggage than just the pounds, like the way my mind thought and the way I, and even the way I like interacted with people, um, simple things, even just this weekend, uh, we went car shopping and I, I got into the passenger side of a vehicle and I was like, wow, I forgot. I never used to get into the passenger side of a vehicle because I was always a driver because I had a seatbelt extender because no seatbelt would ever come around me. I was just too large. And um, just the fact that I had no fear, I can like get into this passenger side and I can buckle up. And I was scheduled to have both my knees replaced. And I was a little concerned about how am I going to do that with, with my job? How am I going to take that much time off work? I have not needed to get my knees replaced. I am healthier now. When the doctor just ran my Framingham score, I come in at six years younger than my actual age. I have no knee pain. I have no joint pain. I can jump on the trampoline with my grandchildren. I feel like a million bucks. I sleep and I'm not... I'm not as skinny as I would like in my imagination thought I would be when I lost all this weight because there's loose skin and whatever. But I'm like, I would trade loose skin for energy and being able to shop my own groceries hands down. So yeah, it was a journey. Uh, mindset was huge, prayer huge, and really deciding, again, this is that legacy piece. What am I here for? And what is my why for why I want to get healthy and why I want to lose weight? And yes, initially it was, I wanted to lose weight, but it quickly became, uh, what, what helped me stay on track was I want to stay healthy because once I started feeling good, if I ate something that made me not feel good, I'm like, hang on, why am I doing this? I'm in bed for a week because I'm eating whatever, salad or rice. This is not, it's not worth it. So doing that, but it's such a mind game because our society rewards food, rewards when you eat, like every relationship includes food. Do you want to go for coffee? Want to come for dinner? Let's go for a movie and eat popcorn, right? There's always food involved. And when I'm not eating that food, I had to get over the mindset of what are people going to think? How am I going to approach this? And how am I going to do this long term? This is going to be my life. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Did I answer your question? I think you that's... did. And here's the interesting thing as you're talking. Well, there are many, many interesting things of what you said. But when you describe that, you made a choice that you choose you. I over did. Over perception, over other people's expectations. That's huge because that's not always easy to do. Nope. Lucky for you, your kids were supporting you. 
right? Yeah. They weren't saying, oh, come on, mom, just eat this. It'll, you know, but we fix this for you. So you're not having to deal with that family social pressure. The pressure right. was get healthy, right? So they're going to champion you. Um, yeah. But also in choosing you, you had really important reasons that went beyond the societal picture of yeah. why you should lose weight to really your heart. What mattered to you about it, about being there, leaving a legacy, doing it for something more. And obviously you're not in charge of like the length of your life, but you are in charge of the quality while you're here. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So super powerful lessons you got along the way. Wow. Now, when you're working with clients, what role does overall health and mindset, their emotions and faith play in their business or personal goals? What have you found around that? I have found, uh, yes, huge. If they want, like I find that people can reach a goal. They can reach a goal and um, they can do it with like willpower and just like plowing through, depending on personality. Not everyone can, but they can. But if that's what they've done, they likely won't stay there. They likely won't keep the weight off. They likely won't stay on track. They'll get to like a happy spot, maybe not their goal. And then um, they think they've made it, but their mindset hasn't changed. So when your mindset hasn't changed and you don't have like a heart reason for why you're doing this, something comes along, a wedding, oh, you're just going to you're just going to cheat for the week for the wedding. Oh, now the wedding turns into a weekend weekend turns into, Oh, there's a birthday next week anyway. So it'll just be a week. And before long, uh, there's no other motivation to stay on track. And so personality is huge. Motivation mindset has to be more than that end goal. It has to be very holistic or I find people lose heart because they're, they're, it's, it's going to be up and down. You're going to have hard days. Like in the process of, of losing weight, you might lose a friend. You might, I don't know, you're like have to move. Like different things happen, right? Good things and bad things are stressors. So you were talking about the emotional connection and heart. So that's a really great place. What I'm curious about then is knowing all of that, and that you use the Enneagram, among other tools in your business, what motivated you to start pursuing this line of work? Yeah, good question. I, by nature, like I, by nature, I'm a teacher. I love, I love to invest in other people. I love to see other people grow. So early on in my career, after I got my degree, I started teaching. I opened my, my own music studio. I was teaching. I love teaching. I love seeing my kids do really, really well. And, um, but then I moved on and I moved into different countries where I couldn't work. And then I started mentoring women, uh, in parenting and different kinds of skills, uh, home skills, parenting skills, marriage skills. What ended up happening was when we moved back into Canada, um, I began mentoring seriously and I worked for an organization where I was helping and mentoring financially. When I began to do that, I was like, I love this and realized a lot of the couples that I was mentoring financially needed marital coaching. So I did a lot of marital coaching and then they'd come to me for personal coaching. And before long, I had lots of people that I was mentoring one-on-one -on -one, and I'm like, this isn't, this isn't working. I love this, but I don't have this many hours. I have all these kids. I have a business to run. I'm mentoring all these people and I was doing it for free because I loved it. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I wrote a book. And I used that book as a year-long mentoring program for all kinds of things. And then I did it once a week, but I had other leaders that were helping with Carry the Load. And um, I realized this is just a passion of mine. So I began to get more training. I had been trained in DISC. Then I got training in Leading from Your Strengths. Um, then I found the Enneagram. And um, I had been excelling as a sales person, of course, an auto salesperson. And I left that to do this full time because this is my passion. I love seeing people succeed. When I see that aha moment and then they come back and say, I tried it. It works. It's amazing. You know, or I didn't lose that friendship after all. Or, you know, I was successful in, you know, this new situation that I wasn't 
you know, I was so worried about or whatever, right? I love that. And um, so that's why I made the shift. The thing is, I feel like I've been coaching all my life. Just now I'm doing it for business. And I think that's just my heart. That's my personality. And in my home, I take care of adults with disabilities, intellectual disabilities. And this is my heart as well. It's my heart to help people become more independent and realize success when the world around them has said, no, you can't. I'm a, yes, you can. And let me show you kind of girl, right? So if someone needs some encouragement, this is where they come. If you want to kick in the pants, this is where you come. And if you're a type nine, I probably won't kick you in the pants at the beginning. I'll talk with you and we won't have conflict and then I'll kill, kick you in the pants. <laughs> well, I was just having a conversation with a newer coaching client of mine. And um, I said, I just need you to know, because I know where you're going to push back on me, and she's super self-motivated, so I'm not worried about it. But I know there will come a point where she's uncomfortable. And I said, and I'm going to not let you run away. I'm not going to be mean, but I'm going to kind of hold a space for you so that you can actually grow into what you tell me you want to be doing anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's, that is the beauty of knowing a bit more. So a couple of questions I want to ask you. Let's talk about the tool itself. I know you've done other work. You've got a background in this. So how do you differentiate the Enneagram from other personality tests, especially when your clients ask you? Right. Lots of people are familiar with Myers-Briggs or the DISC profiling. And um, I think that they all serve a purpose. And I think that they're very good. Um, one of the things that's unfortunately really easy when we get into things like it, uh, Myers Briggs or DISC is it's easy to think, oh, I'm a D or I'm a DC, and then you're kind of in a box. And but we are people, and we flex and we move, and sometimes we'll have the same behavior as another D, uh, but our motivation is completely different. And so what I love about the Enneagram, and often what how I use the Enneagram for actually typing is actually how do you handle stress and what is stress to you what causes stress because that's going to be different across the board if you take someone like me what causes me stress if there's something big i'm going to rush in because i'm going to fix it in my big powerful personality but my type nine girl who lived in my house for so long um she's just going to run away and hide and so everyone handles that so differently how do we do that but it's also interesting because the Enneagram has so many numbers around, every type uses all the numbers in a different way. Just every single day, I use at least five of the numbers on a regular basis. When I have learned and when I can teach my clients how to navigate that, to find the best ways to stay emotionally healthy, relationally healthy, that makes such a difference. And so I think motivation and the way we flex through the day is much more vibrant in the Enneagram than in some of the other personality profiling assessments. When you say flex, I think that's a good reminder that we're not static, right? Yeah. I may start the day in a really healthy spot and then something happens and I dip down and I'm start, you know, I'm ex exhibiting my stress differently. Um, which has consequences, good or bad. So can you talk to us about how we can use our number of stress as a number of growth? Absolutely. Give an example. First define what that means, but then give an example of a couple of numbers, if you would. Sure. Uh, let's say, let's take me, for example, I'm an eight. So I'll talk about eight first because that's my personal number. Uh, my level of stress would be five, right? And um, so when I'm unhealthy, uh, a five tends to withdraw, study, analyze, that kind of thing. So when I'm under stress, you'll see me go to my room. I become like silent. It, it'll feel to other people like I'm giving them a silent treatment. I'm not. I'm just all of a sudden in my head and I'm analyzing. I'm on my computer or on my phone. I'm doing research. And then I will come back and I will use all that, all that research and analysis as ammunition 
to make sure I get my way, right? So that is an unhealthy way to deal with stress. But I can actually use that five in a very healthy way. And I've learned how to put that rhythm into my life and into my day. So when I feel that coming up, I need, and I, I say it, I'm like, I need to go to my five. And so I go to my room and the first thing I do is I take a nap, which is so contrary to my natural high capacity, high energy, but I lay down and I might not always sleep, but I lay down, I set my alarm. And during that time, I start thinking through and analyzing like a five would, what is the truth? What's really happening here? What are my emotions? Why am I so riled up? And I use that time to analyze not the situation because I don't want to come back with ammunition. I use it to analyze where am I, what's really going on here, and what tools and resources do I need to bring back to the situation. And sometimes what I need to bring back situation is just a calmer me. And sometimes what I need to bring back situation is information, but now I'm bringing it as a gift, not ammunition. So I can use that five in a very healthy way to benefit the people around me, sometimes by just shutting me down because an eight can be strong, uh, but sometimes it's also to empower others around me. And um, so, yeah, that's how I use that for myself, for an eight. So let's say you're a type, oh, I don't know. Let's say you're a type two. I'll just pick a two. Um, type twos can you know, they love to help and serve and give and give and they see all the needs around them and they never see their own need, right? But when they get into a place where they are not doing okay, they can go, they can go to eight and they can get kind of like pushy and forceful in, I'm going to do this for you. I'm the one who's going to do this. Or they can go backwards and say, no, you can't come here. And they can cut off relationship, which is what they don't want to do. And then they're very conflicted. And they can do this in a very harsh way. Your very soft, gentle too can suddenly become kind of overpowering, but they can use their eight. And I'll talk about how they use their eight and their four, because this is really, I love how a two can do this. I love, every number can do this, but but they can decide to ahead of time go, ooh, I feel that ire rising and they don't know what to do with it. They can decide, okay, I can choose to put on my eight and set some boundaries. Because eights are great. They're the best at setting boundaries. But twos are the worst at setting boundaries. So a two can say, ah, I'm starting to feel a little bit much here. I'm feeling needy, feeling rejected. I need to set up some boundaries and then decide which boundaries are healthy to put in place and put them in place and keep them. So that's what a two can do. But a two goes to four and a two can go to four in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. A two can go to four and become very weepy and needy and, oh, everything's about me. No one cares. Look at my plight and become a victim, even on behalf of someone else. They can become a victim on behalf of someone else. Look how much I've been helping them. They need my help. And look what I've been doing for them. Why is nobody noticing me? However, a two does need to also recognize, oh, I do have emotions and they are real. So I'm going to go to my room, going to closet myself away. I'm going to pay attention to my emotions, decide what I need. And then I'm going to use my boundaries and find this select people to ask for my needs and set boundaries. So you can use that combination of the four and the eight with the two, and it can be a beautiful combination that harmoniously can work together to make a healthier person. And all the numbers can do that. And it really is like, I loved when you are talking about go to your room and go to your five and take a nap. That's not what you would think. I'm thinking as a five, that is not my first thing. Like it's like, right. slow down, are you kidding me? I'm pushing. <laughs> Because if I'm unhealthy, I'm hanging in the eight zone. So, but what's great about it is that that awareness that gives you a moment to choose, right? Like you're saying with the two, what do I need? What am I feeling? You know, and all of that, instead of in my non-professional thing, I say, instead of spewing all over everybody, it's like, I'm having a temper tantrum and welcome to it, right? And wow. leaving carnage behind you because people are just, but really, I just, I adopted a motto years ago that, um, I don't know if you're familiar with John Muir, 
naturalist, but one of the mottos was leave no trace, right? And I think leave no emotional baggage. If you walk in, don't leave people with your junk, take it out with you or be careful of what you put down because people have a hard time getting over stuff like that, right? Totally. Yeah. It's like and slash when, and burn. Totally. And that whole thing about um, going for a nap is different than, uh, which is not necessarily like it's going to my five, but I choose a nap because that slows down the eight, right? Because uh, an eight is going to go full force, high speed, dynamite behind us. So the nap forces me not to do research, not to do all of those things. So does a five take a nap? Maybe not. But I go, well, I go hiking. I get out way. Yeah, I get away out. from my res research tools. I grab my dog and go. It's like yeah. in the summer, I often hike to yeah. or go to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> if it's just in the middle of summer. In the middle of summer. In the middle of summer, my five, my five hours are at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know that though. And I mean, we can laugh about it, but it's, it's important to know what we can do in, to strengthen ourselves, right? Yeah. Um, because people don't have to change for us in order right. for us to be our best. Yeah. And sometimes you're right. People like you were describing in your own weight loss journey, sometimes relationships end. Yeah. So um, it's not comfortable. We like, you know, we have a lot of messages in society about that, but it's best to be aware of yourself and clear about what you're doing. Um, let me ask you to share, if you would, an, a success story of one of your clients um, that they've experienced through coaching that they otherwise would not have. Okay, I could give you a couple. Um, coaching a type one. Um, oh, wow. I love all my, I love all my clients, but, um, I love when they have success and then they come back and they tell me about it. So this particular type one, um, eventually this type one began to feel like I can't make friends. Nobody likes me. I'm not a good person, but yet a type one's drive is to be a good person, right? So all this conflict. So we were talking, we were talking about what is perfection? Is it like, what can we make our goal? Um, because a type one is always going to aim for a goal, always going to aim for perfection. So what if we change the goal? What if we change the definition of perfection? And so, for example, in weight loss, if a type one is going to try and never cheat on their diet and making it successful. So if the goal is, I'm going to stay on plan for four days out of seven, Wow, now my type one can be successful. So now I hear my type one coming back. First of all, lots more grace for other people. And coming back after four days on plan and three days way off plan going, I made it. I was successful today. And now can go into the next week with motivation, inspiration, because the goal was reached. They did good. They get the check mark. They have that mental, yay, I did it. And, but we need, often need others to come alongside us, um, especially type ones, to understand what is good, what is perfection. Because for a type one, it's not perfect unless it's beyond perfect. And so having an external person for a type one is, is very important. So that's one one. And another really good example I can give you, uh, I had a type nine that I was coaching and had this new food plan she was on, but was going on vacation and super worried because they were staying with friends, super worried. How am I going to do this? Because they're, I don't want to like, nines don't like conflict. Nines don't want to ruffle the feathers, right? How am I going to say this? What am I going to do? So we had a coaching conversation about what are the words you can use that don't like that feel peaceful, that don't feel like they're causing conflict. What can we say? And we decided, she decided that it would be helpful if she invited her into her story and then asked her for her opinion, because that would be less conflicting, right? So this is, this is how it came about. This is what I've been eating that makes me feel really good. 
what do you suggest? Do you have a restaurant close to you that could eat food that I, that serves food I could eat? Or could we go grocery shopping? What do you suggest? Could we make the meal plan together? And suddenly her friend was like, oh, this is fantastic. Tell me more. Of course I want to support you. And suddenly a whole week that had been building with stress and anxiety with her type nine personality could approach it from a conflict less situation and ended up staying on plan the entire vacation and came back feeling like a complete winner and had supporters now for her way of eating right so yeah that what i love about that story is the win but also her friend's response and i'm curious what your clients i guess honesty but also her dedication and choosing herself, how that might have positively impacted her friend to say, oh, there's an area in my life I wanna, I wanna clean up, I wanna feel better about, and now I see how it's possible, right? Without having to feel defensive or like trouble's gonna, troubles are gonna come. So I love that story. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, she's an encouragement. And you know, she's grown so much as a nine through this health journey, because nines don't choose themselves. Nines numb themselves and deny themselves through this journey of health has become emotionally aware, has learned how to speak up, has learned how to choose and say, this is okay for me to say yes to me. And even to know what me wants is a huge step ahead for a, a type nine. So and proud it's an of example that whatever we think our goal is, as we move forward and make progress on it, other things shift for us because I don't think we, and I, this is true for myself. Like I think I have a goal and it isn't until afterwards I look and I think I had no idea those were the benefits that came with those small incremental changes. Absolutely. And now that I see those benefits, I'm doubling down on those benefits because their health, either their physical health, mental health, whatever. But I'm going, I didn't know that was possible from those shifts, but it, we are whole, we're whole beings, right? So you don't just get to pick one, I'm going to change my weight. It has an effect in other areas of your life. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Carla Ann, I know we could gab on forever. I actually feel like we could, um, I feel <laughs> like I've known you, um, but I do want to know what is the best place for people? For people to find more about you, like where, where do you hang out? How can they reach out to you? And also, if you have a resource or something you want to offer our listeners, can you share that as well? Absolutely. Well, I do have a website, refinerytransformation.com. And there you'll find out a little bit about me. You can hit me up on the contact us page. There's information on Enneagram there, a little bit about my bio. That So you can reach me there for sure. But I'm also on Instagram. I'm quite active there at Refinery Transformation. Um, and of course, you can always email me um, if you'd like. So those would be the, the most popular ways to reach me. I do have a resource that I think is phenomenal for every emotional uh, or Enneagram type, and it's called Focus on Feelings. Many of us don't actually know what our feelings are. We feel a feeling, but we say, I'm mad or I'm happy, or I don't know, I'm sad, but we don't actually know what that is. So I have uh, written a book, it's a workbook um, called Focus on Feelings, and it is, it is available on my store on my website, but it is something that's gonna help people it, uh, decide which is the exact emotion I'm feeling, because sometimes I'm angry because I'm hurt, Sometimes I'm angry because I've been cheated. Sometimes, and they're all different, but I just say I'm angry. But what are you really? You did talk about the, the resource and how it can help us identify our feelings. So I think that's powerful. So Carla Ann, as we get ready to wrap this up, I want to ask you if you have a parting word of advice or if you could talk to Carla Ann when she was about eight or nine years old, what would you tell her? Oh, gracious. Eight or nine years old. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Um, well, you know, I would say that, hmm, how would I, how would I say this succinctly? You know, we need to, we need to make sure that we are healthy and not medicating the emotions, but looking at what is 
what is really happening so that we can become whole in every area, every area. When we start dealing with our emotions, our mindset, our health changes, our sleep changes, our relationship changes, everything changes. So really working on emotions and finding out who I am, how do I handle that and naming them, um, becoming comfortable with the way I've been created, how I show up in the world. I think all those are super important. So get to know how you've been created and for what you've been created and then don't stuff it all down and hide it. It's beautiful. Let the world see. That's beautiful. Thanks for being a guest, Carla Ann, on the No Labels, No Limits podcast. And you guys, I'm encouraging to hop over and check out her website or her Instagram if that's where you all hang out. Um, as you can tell, Carla Ann is a delight and she has a lot of wisdom and skill and obviously it is doing her work from her own calling. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.